Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. This morning I had some fun making this card and I really enjoyed it so I thought I would recreate it for you and maybe throw in a few alterations to give you some other ideas. It is an anniversary card but that's just because the sentiment fitted with this design but obviously you can make it for any occasion at all. So this card is five and a half by five and a half inches. I'm going to go slightly bigger this time. This is five and three quarter by five and three quarter inches, smooth white cardstock. And to start with, I'm going to work directly on the card blank. This one is tent fold and it's got a horizontal band running across it. I'm thinking with this one, I'll do tent fold again, but I'll do the band vertically. We'll secure it with a bit of tape there and a bit of tape there to stop it wandering and then I'll use the grids on my glass mat to line up some washi tape and create a band and I think maybe what's that two inches wide I think I might actually do it a bit bigger I'm thinking just slightly bigger there on this one, I used three pink Distress Oxide, Spun Sugar, Saltwater Taffy and Walnut Lipstick. And the green was Bundled Sage. To start this card, I'm going to use Shaded Lilac. So I'm going to go for purplish tones. And I've got this old typewriter font stencil. This came off a recent oh, creative stamping magazine, I think. And I'm going to add a light purple so this is shaded lilac as i've said a light purple inking through the stencil this is just background texture i'm being careful not to go over lines and blend on the rest of the card it doesn't have to meet nicely because the middle of this strip is actually going to be covered by a square so where they meet can be a bit of a mess no one will ever know so that's that done i'll just carefully peel that off slowly so as not to tear the card this is very low tack this washi tape so it's pretty good for not tearing And to add a bit of weight to the background, to make it a bit more obvious, I ran a couple of doodly lines along the edge of the band of stenciling. So I'll do the same on this one. I'm moving from my shoulder and elbow rather than my wrist, and that helps the lines to not necessarily be straight, but not veer off all over the place. So I think three lines on either side adds a bit of weight and definition so what we need now on top are three squares and I've got one large and two small and I think I'll stick with that arrangement so I've got a bit of mixed media paper here this is De La Rowney Optima mixed media paper and it's my favorite mixed media paper uh, because I've been using it forever and it never really lets me down it can take lots of water and it's quite white so it works well with white cardstock some mixed media and watercolor papers can be quite creamy or ivory and that uh, makes them stand out a bit and doesn't make them blend in where you want them to but this one is quite a nice white one so i don't feel like i've done much smushing lately so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to smush on some shaded lilac so i pop this on my grip mat and I've got my smusher here. If you want to know how to make and use a smusher, there's a playlist. So pop along to my channel page and you can watch the playlist. And pick it up and smush it on. And I'm going to dry that with my hair dryer. Now I'll use what's left to get the hair out to do a second coat, a second layer of smushing. And this adds depth and interest. 
it looks a bit like a cloudy sky to die cut i'm going to use the gemini mini and i've got a new cutting folder here and what i've done is i have snipped it in half instead of keeping the hinge i've snipped it in half because one of my uh, lovely viewers messaged me on facebook and told me that she finds they walk less when she does this so thank you very much for that tip and i'm giving it a go so i've used this a couple of times and we'll see how we get on I've got my squares on my grip mat just to hold them in place and I'm going to stamp on them with this text stamp and it came from the same magazine as this stencil and the text says flower and then there's a definition under it in an old typewritery font and I think that'll work well with the flower that I'm going to add on but to bring in a bit of difference a bit of variation i'm going to use milled lavender distress oxide to stamp this and i just want to get it straight on here it's not particularly visible because milled lavender is quite a a faint purpley pink color but that's okay because what it is doing is it's just adding texture and bringing in a bit more colour. But what I'm trying to do is get the text parallel with the top and the bottom lines of the squares. I don't want it wonky, I want it to be parallel and square. Now I've got another stencil that came from that magazine and this one's got butterflies and kind of coffee rings on it and splats and I thought that would be a fun way of adding some more texture to my little squares. So I'm going to use a finger dauber and go in with the milled lavender to add these splats. I think that'll do nicely. On this card, to tie the squares in with the background band, I went round the edges with, again, doodly black lines. And I did it over the stitching, so they sort of look a bit stitched. I'm going to do the same with this one. Just got a fine black gel pen. And I'm going to run loose black lines along the stitching. this one I added the squares central over the band but I'm thinking with this one I will hop that one centrally over but then have these two squares staggered so even though everything's contained with this band there's a bit of a diagonal going on which is fun I think and I'm going to add these with craft foam So that's the base of the card done. Now for the focal image, the flower. I've got another piece of mixed media paper here and I plan to die cut these flowers from it, but first I'm gonna do some coloring. So the background is kind of ethereal and dreamy with all the smushing and stenciling and stamping. So to contrast that and help the focal point stand out, I'm going to make my flower a solid color. So I'm starting with milled lavender and that's going to be the main colour of the flower because the colour of the background mainly is shaded lilac so the milled lavender will stand out against the shaded lilac. But I will bring in some shaded lilac just for a bit of variation so everything's not flat there. That'll do. And now I shall run that through my mini Gemini. To give a bit more definition to the oops, petals, that was a bit much, a bit more than I anticipated, 
just going to add a little bit of that's better dab it rather than sweep it a little bit of shaded lilac around the tips you can brush it down so it's not too in your face then i'll bring in some milled lavender too just to bring that color back this is the good thing about distress oxides because they have an opacity to them they can cover each other up so you can just go in and out with whatever colors you want until you're satisfied before I construct my flower I'm going to use this embossing tool to go up and down the petals on the underside to give some definition and dimension and just push those back down actually just do that in the middle and then everything looks more realistic more flowery so add a little bit of glue in the middle add the next layer on top turn so that the top layer of petals overlap the gap and then the same again with this one just want to create a flower center with a bit of scattered straw again i shall give that a little squish but on the right side this time add a bit of glue add that to the middle and when i finished assembling the card i'll add a nouveau drop or an enamel dot in the middle there to give it a bit of shine and dimension, more dimension. For the leaves, I'm going to use cracked pistachio because I think that will go nicely with the purples that I've got there. And gently brushing over the ink pad to get some green and some white to get catch the texture that's on the paper. And now we can die cut from it with these leaves. Leaves can get a bit of dimension too. You can emboss some leaf patterns from the back or you could do it from the front. You could press down and add some veins and add a little bit more green around the edges just to give them a bit of an edge. So we had the flower off to the left on here. I could pop it in the middle if I wanted, but again, I do think it, I do like things uh, offset rather than centralized a lot of the time so I am going to do the same thing there and I'm going to add some leaves like that so this is going to get glue in the middle and then glue on the ends of the flowers where it will be touching the square with this sentiment I stamped it in black ink and then cut it out with my trimmer this one is one that I printed on the computer or printed on the printer from the computer and cut out again with a trimmer so I think that works best down here because again it carries on that diagonal and Hmm, I'm wondering, I don't think it, yeah, I might put it on craft foam. I want to tuck it just underneath that petal there so that it all feels a bit connected. I wonder if I can move this. I think I want this leaf a bit further down now so that it pe peeks out from beneath the sentiment. Again, that just makes everything connected. And for the centre of my flower, on this one I used White Blizzard Nouveau Drops, which dries clear but it has an iridescent glitter in it. And that has picked up the colour from the scattered straw that I used on the centre. So it's got a nice yellow colour. For this one, I'm going to add a white dot. And again, because Distress Oxides are water reactive, the white nouveau drops will pull some of the yellow from the paper underneath it and they'll tinge slightly yellow 
it's there's not a lot of yellow underneath it and it's quite a big blob of white so it might stay white but either way it'll be fine and that is it that's two cards made using the same supplies the same techniques the same design idea but just different colors and a different arrangement i wonder which one you prefer the pinky horizontal one or the purpley vertical one i'm not sure which one i prefer i think i like them both the same this time but do let me know in the comments if you have a preference right i think that'll do for today thank you for watching and i'll see you back here very soon bye for now